Hello everybody and thank you for joining us here at the Canyon City Public Library for another virtual story time. We'd like to start our story times off with our welcome song and it's sung to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and it goes, Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, let's have some fun. First we'll clap our hands just so, then we'll bend and touch our toes. Welcome, welcome everyone. Now you're here, let's have some fun. Good job, everyone. Hopefully your parents are still singing along and enjoying the virtual story times. Just as a quick reminder, we are back to doing in-person story times. Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays, all at 1030, so please stop in and see us. Brings us to our first story. Growing Vegetable Soup. <clears throat> Written and illustrated by Lois Alhart. Published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. <clears throat> Dad says we're going to grow vegetable soup. We're ready to work, and our tools are too. Looks like they have a shovel and a rake and a hoe. We're planting the seeds in the soil. They drop it in the hole. Looks like they have some green beans. Peas, corn, zucchini, and carrots. And all the sprouts. Sprouts of tomatoes and broccoli and peppers and cabbage. And giving them water. Using the watering can. And waiting for warm sun to make them grow. Looks like the onions are starting to grow and the peppers, the cabbage, the corn and the green beans. And grow. And grow into plants. So click the peas, the zucchinis. We watch over them and weed. He's using a hand grubber to get all the weeds out of his garden. Until the vegetables are ready for us to pick. Got some nice ripe tomatoes and corn. Or dig up. So he's digging up the potatoes and the carrots. And carry home. Then we wash them. Look, they wash the onions and the cabbage and cut them and put them into a pot of water. Chopped up the onions and tomatoes and peas and peppers and cook them into vegetable soup. At last, it's time to eat it all up. It was the best soup ever. And we can grow it again next year. Growing vegetable soup. Great story, great way to expand vocabulary with our youngest readers talking about what's going on in the pages and has a great recipe. So feel free to stop in and pick it up and check out and make some vegetable soup. Hopefully everybody's been practicing good hygiene still. At home, we've been using a song here at the Storytime's Public Library, a hand-washing song. The children have really been enjoying it. It goes, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together, nice and clean, nice and clean. Good job, everyone. Hi, everybody. Now we're going to read The Crunching, Munching Caterpillar. The Crunching, Munching Caterpillar by Sheridan Kane, illustrated by Jack Tickle, and published by Tiger Tales. Caterpillar was always hungry. For weeks, he crunched and munched his way through the fresh, juicy leaves of a blackberry bush. One day, Caterpillar was about to crunch into another leaf when... Bzzz. 
Bumblebee landed beside him. Wow, said Caterpillar. How did you get here? Simple, said Bumblebee. I have wings. Look. Oh, I'd like some of those, said Caterpillar. Bumblebee flew up into the air and buzzed busily from flower to flower. Bzzz, zoom. I'd love to fly like that, said Caterpillar. Well, you can't, said Bumblebee. I've got wings and you've got legs. Your legs are for walking. I guess so, sighed Caterpillar. Bumblebee flew off to the next bush. Watching Bumblebee fly had made Caterpillar very hungry. So he crunched and he munched until it was time for bed. <sighs> Caterpillar woke to the sound of twittering. Birds swooped and soared in the early morning light. Caterpillar was just about to start his breakfast when Sparrow landed beside him. I'd love to fly high in the air like that, said Caterpillar. Well, you can't, said Sparrow. You need to be as light as the dandelion fluff that floats on the breeze. You're far too big to fly. Your legs are for walking. I guess so, said Caterpillar sadly. Caterpillar kept on crunching and munching all day and into the evening when the sun began to set. He wrapped a leaf around himself to keep warm. He was just about to go to sleep when Butterfly landed gracefully beside him. Oh, I wish I could fly like you, sighed Caterpillar, but I'm too big and I have legs instead of wings. Butterfly smiled a secret knowing smile. Who knows? Perhaps one day you will fly. Light as a feather, like me, she said. But now, little caterpillar, you should go to sleep. You look very tired. Butterfly was right. Caterpillar suddenly felt very sleepy. As Butterfly flew off into the night sky, he fell into a deep, deep sleep. Caterpillar slept all through the winter, and his sleep was filled with dreams. He dreamed he had wings and was soaring in the blue sky above the tall trees. He dreamed he was a piece of dandelion fluff drifting towards the sun. He dreamed he was as light as a feather floating on the breeze. When Caterpillar woke up, he felt the warmth of the spring sun. He was stiff from his long sleep, but he did not feel very hungry. He stretched and he stretched and a breeze lifted Caterpillar into the air. Caterpillar was no longer short and plump. He had wings, great, big, wonderful butterfly wings. Wow, he said, I'm flying. I'm really flying. The Crunching Munching Caterpillar. So this story today just is fun. From the author of The Day the Crayons Quit, Drew DeWalt comes the Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Pictures by Adam Rex. Published by <clears throat> Blazer and Bray. The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors. One, two, three, go. Long ago, in an ancient distant realm called the Kingdom of the Backyard, there lived a warrior named Rock. Rock was the strongest in all of the land, but he was sad because no one could give him a worthy challenge. Rock traveled to the mysterious forest of over by the tree sw swing, where he met a warrior who hung on a rope, holding a giant's underwear. Drop that underwear and battle me, you ridiculous wooden clip man. I will pinch you and make you cry, Rock Warrior. So, Rock vs. Clothespin. Rock is victorious. Even though he had won, Rock was still unsatisfied. So he journeyed on to the mystical tower of Grandma's favorite apricot tree. There he was met by an odd delicious fruit. You, sir, Look like a fuzzy little butt. What? I challenge you to a duel. Then let us battle. 
Rock vs. Apricot. I will beat you, Rock, with my tart and tangy sweetness. Rock is victorious. Ugh, I am so smushed. And yet smushing you has brought me no joy. Are you not entertained? They were entertained, but the battle had been too easy. So Rock left the kingdom of the backyard still in search of a worthy foe. Meanwhile, in the empire of Mom's home office, on lonely windswept desk mountain, a second great warrior sought the glory of battle, and his name was Paper. Even though he was the smartest warrior in all the land, he also was sad, because no one could outwit him. He set out across desk mountain to find his match. There he met a large and square monster. I gobble up the likes of you and spit them out every day, little paper. Oh, then taste my fury, giant box monster. Paper versus computer printer. No, not a paper jam. Paper is victorious. Having beaten the fiercest fire fighter of Desk Mountain, Paper climbed down to the pit of office trash bin, where he battled the most terrifying horde of creatures in all of the land, the half-eaten bag of trail mix. Paper vs. half-eaten bag of trail mix. Ah, oh, foul wizard, he's blotted out the sun. Run for your lives, laddies. Paper wins again. Can no one beat me? And so, with the heavy heart, Paper departed the empire of Mom's home office. At the same time in the kitchen realm, in the tiny village of Junk Drawer, there lived a third great warrior. They called her Scissors. And she was the fastest blade in all of the land. She, too, was unchallenged. On this day, her first opponent was a strange, sticky circle man. I will battle you, and I will leave you beaten and confused with my adhesive and tangling powers. Let's do battle, you tacky and vaguely round monstrosity. Scissors vs. Roll of Tape Scissors is victorious. Scissors forged on across the, the realm of the fridge waste of refriger refrigerator freeze. Freezer. There she met her most fearsome adversaries yet. Dinosaurs made of frozen breaded chicken. I have come from the far reaches of the kitchen to battle you. Oh, bizarre and yummy breaded dinosaurs. Bow before our child pleasing shapes and flavors, sword master. No one can resist our crunchy awesomeness. Scissors versus dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets. Dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets win? No, wait. No, they don't. Scissors is victorious again. Am I so good that even dinosaur shaped chicken nuggets can't be beat me? And so scissors like rock and paper before her traveled beyond her own kingdom seeking out a challenger who was her equal. Then one day in the great ca cavern of two car garage, Rock and Scissors came face to face. I hope you're wearing your battle pants, Rock Warrior. If by battle pants you mean no pants, but I'm willing to fight you, then yes, yes I'm wearing my battle pants, weird scissory one. Rock vs. Scissors. An epic and legendary battle ensues, but ultimately Rock was victorious. You have made me so happy by beating me. I wish I felt that joy, Scissors, for I have yet to meet a warrior who can beat me. Hi there. Those are fighting words. Wait, what? Rock versus paper. I paper beat him. This is the best day of my life. Thank you for winning, oh great knight of paper. That's fine for you, but it looks as though no one will ever beat me. <laughs> Not so fast, paper. Wait, what? Scissors versus paper. <gasps> you beat me. 
And the three great warriors hugged each other and danced for joy. And they became fast friends. Finally, they had each met their matches. They were so happy, in fact, that they began to battle again. Round and round they went, in the most massive and epic three-way battle of all time. And it is said that this joyous struggle still rages on this very day. That is why children around the world in backyards, on playgrounds, and yes, even in classrooms and libraries, still honor the three great warriors by playing rock, paper, scissors. The legend of rock, paper, scissors. Great story. Have many more. Please feel free to stop in and pick up your favorite. Thank you for joining us for another virtual story time. Hopefully you enjoyed it and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.